Oh, I want that timeline. This podcast is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. Spoiler warning for whatever is in the title of this episode. And now for the obligatory socials. Please like, share and subscribe. You can find the podcast on Twitter at HorrorPod69. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Slasher and Goodreads. Become part of the disturbed community by asking for the Facebook group and Discord links. Send dick pics to the Horror of Babylon podcast at gmail.com. Support the show at patreon.com slash the Horror of Babylon. In closing, you can let your friends know that the Horror of Babylon is available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible and all other major podcast apps. Welcome to episode 100 of the Horror of Babylon, where we review Exorcist, The Beginning, and Dominion, prequel to <laughs> The Exorcist. Still the worst title ever. Uh, I am Ryan. Semicolon. <laughs> I'm Ryan, and with or me colon. as always is Daniel. Say hi, Daniel. I can't believe this is our 100th episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could have been worse. It could could have been worse. That, I think that's uh, that's our show in a nutshell. <laughs> and speaking of nuts, thank you to our patrons, Abigail the First, Breaker of Chains, Mother of Dragons, and Logan, the, the Full Metal, metal patron. patron, and, and ben, ben, the, the fourth, fourth Patron of Hope, and Mia the Fifth, the Rainmaker. She makes it rain, yo. And Four Horsemen Comics and Gaming, which you can visit at the Morgantown Mall in Morgantown, West Virginia, the Mall Robinson in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You can shop online at shop.fourhorsemancomics.com. And normally here I would make a joke about them opening a store by that abandoned church in Kenya, but no. It's wrong. Oh, oh I have a joke. Okay. He opened the same store twice. Oh... <laughs> <laughs> and that he would be Ronald the Third, Grampus of Christmas. Uh, trigger warning: I put stillborn babies and animal attacks. Um, I didn't add this, but I was going to write down maggot covered baby. <laughs> yeah, just I mean, death of babies, stillborn uh, babies, child being eaten alive. Yeah. Uh, other than that, just the general exorcist stuff. Um, if you're one of those people who absolutely cannot stand even like the thought of Nazi imagery and they do exist yeah there you go it references to uh, concentration camp camps and yeah there you go yeah okay cool uh, so our history with both films go ahead okay so I actually got it backwards I thought I had seen Dominion I had seen the beginning when it came out in theaters I did not see Dominion and I remember going oh, this ain't too bad of course, I was. It was like 2004. Yep. So I was 16. So I was like, okay, it's it, it's a horror movie. I saw. So I had not seen Dominion t- until this, mm-hmm. uh, but I did see Exorcist: The Beginning with my dad when it came out in theaters, and I really liked it. I really liked The Exorcist, and Indiana Jones was always one of my biggest things. Archaeology was something that I, I considered pursuing when I was a kid. So I really liked this movie, but I I don't think I had, until the other night, I don't think I ever watched this since it came out in theaters. Yeah. Um, I know that at some point I had seen Dominion because I'm re- I remembered scenes while I was watching this, mm-hmm. but when and how I could not tell you. Maybe on TV or something. Maybe on TV, maybe as part of a marathon, because I've, I've done exorcist marathons before, mm. or... Usually when I do those, though, it's like, I want to watch The Last Exorcist, or some of, like, the other, like, cheesy knockoffs, mm-hmm. and then sometimes the actual Exorcist movies get thrown into the mix. So, before we go into background, I kind of want to just share my story of watching this. Okay. Um, so, we're recording on a Wednesday, so it was Monday night, uh, Beck and Drake were gone, 
and Emma was she's been it's so funny so the next book we're doing is, is Battle Royale yay Emma's been in the middle of uh, marathoning all the Hunger Games movies so she was into that and she didn't want to do anything with me so I was like okay well I'll actually sit down and watch these two movies and I'm watching Exorcist the beginning and I'm like you know this feels a lot to me this feels to me like a better version of Exorcist 2 but still not it's not a very good movie, but I still like it. Like there's stuff. Yeah, in here. there's enjoy. There's some enjoyable bits. Yeah, and I I definitely see why I like this as a kid. And then I'm, I had time, so I was like, all right, I'll at least start Dominion. And I I'm thinking, well, Daniel says this is like the same movie. <laughs> and I read the description, and I'm like, oh, it, it was released one year later in 2005. It's still has Stellan Skarsgård. <laughs> And I read the description, and he's like, oh, he, it's about an exorcism in Africa. Maybe he, like, gets called back to Africa from the Vatican <laughs> to, like, perform another exorcism, and it's just, like, super similar. No, no, it's just, go on. And then the first 30 minutes of Dominion are probably the most miserable and pissed <laughs> off I've ever been in almost any movie. <laughs> By the time I finished it... Like, I stopped watching it and finished it today. Mm. I think I have a better opinion of it um, because I, I stopped. But I was just so upset. I uh, I watched them back-to-back -back and didn't stop. And I, th this is... I was sitting there like this. Just... No one can see me, but I was just kind of scowling at my screen. Yeah. <laughs> he looks like Snoke in his, in his chair looking at Ben Solo, like... The vampires are pure myth. Superstition. I may be able to bring you proof that the superstition of yesterday can become the scientific reality of today. I, I did some research on, on why these movies are so similar, so we're going to jump into background. I also did a bunch of research, but you go ahead, because you wrote it down. Well, I wrote it down too, but yours is on screen. Okay, so... The original attempt was to do a prequel to The Exorcist about Father Marin. Mm -hmm. uh, the original script was written by William Washer Jr., uh, who wrote the script for Terminator 2 and Judge Dredd. Now, when this is said and done, like six different people will have touched the scripts for these two movies. Always a good sign. Yeah, but I'm only going to mention the first two. Now, the, that original script was revised by Caleb Carr, Caleb only has five credits and I, I'm sorry, four credits on I am no I'm sorry, that was right five credits on IMDb, these two movies, two TV movies and one TV series. I actually looked him up on uh, Wikipedia. He's a historian and it has written a lot of nonfiction. That's kind of interesting to have somebody like that touch up a script. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the originally Tom McLaughlin who directed. Friday the 13th Part 6 was set to direct, and Liam Neeson was going to portray Father Marin. Oh, I want that timeline. Both left the project. I couldn't find a reason why Liam, ne Le Liam Neeson did. Maybe he just didn't like the script. He read the, I was going to say he read the script. Or maybe he just he had another project. I don't know. What is with this bald guy with the weird arm? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and William Peter Blatty was not to be involved from the very beginning, uh, regardless of, of quality or whatever. So One of the only things I know about Blatty is eventually he said that he preferred Dominion. Yes, and I have that in here. Okay. Um, so production-wise, as they started at filming the, the film, and this would be the film that would become Dominion prequel to The Exorcist, <laughs> The second movie released, but the first movie produced. It was filmed in Morocco for six weeks and Rome for two months, and it was directed by Paul Schrader, who wrote the screenplays for Raging Bull and Taxi Driver, a very famous Robert De Niro movie. I like those movies. The studio absolutely hated it. There was there was a severe lack of gore and scares. It was just it wasn't scary. It didn't feel like an Exorcist movie. It didn't tie to the original movie at all. So they had him re-edit the film twice and submit two different recuts to the studio. They said, no, those are bad. They said, okay, let's do more shooting. And they started doing more shooting and more shooting. And eventually they chose to fire Paul Schrader. 
and they hired a new director, Rennie Harlan, who directed Deep Blue Sea, Cliffhanger, Die Hard 2, and Nightmare on Elm Street 4. I like two of those movies. Rennie Harlan got the studio to do some recasting and reshoot most of the film, and basically they ended up with two completely different... Oh, not completely. Two different movies what would become Dominion, directed by Paul Schrader, and Exorcist the Beginning, directed by Rennie Harlan. I can't wait to talk about the similarities. Because yeah. there are some scenes that are like, it's the same scene, but they've reshot it to change the tone. And But then there's the same lines. And then there are also just the same shots that are used in, in both. Yeah, but yeah. They're, they're usually just like transition shots mm -hmm. or the baby. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so Rennie wanted to do what the studio more scares, more action, just like a, a more bombastic version of the movie. In total, between the two movies, Morgan Creek Morgan Creek Productions paid about ninety million dollars to make these two films. Yep. So the second movie produced, Exorcist: The Beginning, released in theaters August twentieth, two thousand four. They it's so had a budget of fifty million, so more than half of that 90 million for the two and had a box office of 78.1 million which does make it a financial failure um but then they decided less than a year later <laughs> we'll try dominion <laughs> well they they just said you know what we have this movie made <laughs> it's going to make more than zero dollars yeah so let's recoup however much of it we can so the next year, March 18th, 2005, with what they say is a budget of $30 million, they released Dominion, prequel to The Exorcist, and it took in about a quarter of a million dollars. Granted, it had a very limited release, but I don't think it would have done well if it had a full release regardless. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with that. I think that you would have seen similar numbers. It, it, probably, it would have gotten a little bit of a box office based off of the Exorcist name, but that would have been it. I think it would. It's possible that, and I actually like Googled it mm -hmm. and found a New York Times article from from when it was released, and I had to pay to read the full article. But the first like couple sentences was like, "People going to see the Dominion prequel to the Exorcist meet this weekend may be feeling a bit of deja vu." <laughs> um, but basically, both films failed critically. Both failed financially, but William Peter Blatty uh, did say that watching Exorcist: The Beginning was his most humiliating professional experience. And on the other hand, he said that Dominion is a handsome, classy, elegant piece of work. I don't know if I'd go that far, buddy. But then again, like what Blatty enjoys is different than what I guess a lot of people enjoy. And I think now is a good time to just say general thoughts on both. I think I no I don't think. I prefer Exorcist the beginning. However, if I had flipped them mm -hmm. and watched Dominion and then the beginning, I may be saying something different, but there are specific things about the beginning that I prefer. The my opinion is is that between these good movies is one good idea. Mhm. Mm I prefer, I prefer a lot of the storytelling and shots in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But I also prefer a lot of, like, the weird shit that happens in Dominion. And I prefer a lot of, like, the excavation stuff in Dominion. I like some of the weird stuff in Dominion. And then some of the weird stuff, I think, is distracting. Yeah. Um, but um, but I, overall, I would say neither is very good. Mm -hmm. But I do find enjoyment in both. And that's that. Another story in the classic, infallible three-act structure. Good enough for Aristotle. Good enough for The Simpsons. Mr. Sislak, I have a feeling there's going to be one more act to this story. Well, I'm not hanging around for that. Four acts. This might be a good time to just, like, segue into structure when it comes to, like, the beginning. Mm -hmm. Is I prefer Father Marin's uh, backstory being unveiled in those bits and pieces in the beginning way more. To where Dominion just has it all. Hey, here's his origin story. So, if you see here, under structure and themes, number C. Both films explain Father Marin's trauma during World War II. The beginning does it in pieces throughout the film. Yeah. Demillion gives it to you all at the beginning, which is more effective. And I agree. I think the beginning is way more effective. I think I, 
I definitely, I uh, for me, it is definitely more effective. I think it's it draws you out more emotionally, mm -hmm. and it's not like it's a big mystery, mm -hmm. but you get to like it unfurls the emotions of it more slowly, and it has him come to grips with it more slowly over time. To where in Dominion, like it did traumatize him, but it's not crippling him in the same way. Well, and something that there was a little bit of a, I don't want to say a twist, but like a shock mm -hmm. that you. You don't find out until almost the very end of Exorcist. That he actually beginning. like points out the that dead. he has to pick ten. Yeah, they save that to like and right then, at the and end. And it's very slow and dramatic. Mm -hmm. And I actually, I honestly think that's the most. That's my king across both the films. Is I think that his backstory in that is the best part of filmmaking between these two movies. Probably, yeah, I would agree with that. Um, so, which is the better prequel? Assuming either is a good prequel. <sighs> To me, neither is a great prequel. Yeah. But Exorcist the Beginning is a little better because it involves Pazuzu specifically. It has the statue. Cause, yeah, because even in The Exorcist, the demon specifically mentions that this isn't the first time. Like, this is a rematch. Yeah. I agree with that. And in the second, in Dominion, there's a statue of Ball down there, mm -hmm. which would be interesting if you were doing somebody who wasn't Father Marin. Yeah. But this is this is Father Marin. It's his origin story. Yeah. Um um I th I think the beginning is better in a lot of ways, especially now on my rewatch of these. Mhm. Mm um I think a lot of the scenes that I enjoy stick out more in my head. I'm going to have to go with the beginning now. Yeah. Um it's not by a, it's not by like a wide margin. But it's by enough. Cause they're so similar. Yeah. I think, for me, where they both kind of fail is that I really love the scene where... I, I believe Father Marin is speaking with Chris McNeil. Or maybe maybe he's speaking with the other... I, I don't remember. But he he's talking about his crisis of faith and when he lost his faith. And he says the reason that he was able to regain his faith is because he... Well, his issue was that he didn't feel like he cared enough about people, but he realized that his actions were more important than his internalized feelings, mm -hmm. and that if he was doing what was right and, and showing people he cared through his actions, it didn't matter if internally, if he didn't, you know personally care about these the people as much yeah and i wish that they would have tied that into like i love overall i love the story like he's traumatized by what happened to him in world war ii mm -hmm. he's I, I would lose my faith if if that happened to me god is not here today priest and then he has to be put in a situation where or the only thing that can save him and save this kid is his faith so mm -hmm. like i like that but i i wish they would have found some way to tie it into what he said in the book I, th I think part of the movie's, both of the movie's problems is that, uh, and it's more of a, it's a bigger problem in the beginning, mm -hmm. especially with the ending, because, spoilers, everybody dies except Marin and one kid. Yep. Is that it becomes, both of them become too bombastic. It's not that their crazy shit doesn't happen in The Exorcist, mm -hmm. but when you compare, like, what Pazuzu does in Exorcist 1, he's like, floats in the air some... It's all about, I'm challenging your faith over what I'm going to do to this little girl. Mm -hmm. It's not, I can use my psychic powers to break all the bones in your body. That's not that's not what's scary. What's scary is, is you losing the battle for someone else's soul. It's In the original Exorcist, it's on a, a much smaller and personal scale. I probably would have had them scale it back some, but I'll talk more about it because I saw your homework question, so... Well, and just in response to that, I agree with everything you said, mm -hmm. but just looking at it as a movie on its own and not as an exorcist movie I, if it was if it was called anything else and it wasn't like tied specifically to like another incident that i could compare it to in my head i say this is a perfectly fine exorcist movie I, I like how it opens on that battlefield with only a single surviving priest and then the end parallels mm -hmm. with everybody but father Marin and the kid dying yeah it's a good sandwich yeah i, I like that but i also agree it's just that the ante is so much higher in that movie and, and somewhat in, in Dominion as well yeah. compared to the original. 
Yeah, in Dominion it's scaled back a little bit, but it's still like there's all this cosmic shit happening in the sky. Because mm-hmm. in, in Dominion, like almost nobody dies. Yeah, like some people die, but in Exorcist, the beginning, they're just like, okay, more people need to die, and that's exactly yeah. what happens. Because the studio wanted more gore, yeah. and the guy's like, all right, all right, sure. <laughs> Okay. Uh, some of the gore is good. Okay, so obviously these two these two movies have a lot of themes in common with each other, but what do they have in common with previous Exorcist properties? Possession. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think these two remind me the most of Exorcist Two. That yeah. Um, that tying of tribal culture and like imperial caucasian and european american culture mm-hmm. and the the influence in the battle between the two groups and the rock church in exorcist 2 r- reminded me a lot of the ch- uh, the church in exorcist the beginning not so much the church in dominion because the two churches are actually pretty different yeah, i was sitting there going what is with the Exorcist origin stories needing to invent these crazy make believe churches for Father Marin's backstory. Especially when it it irritates me a little bit because I'm sitting there and I'm seeing like the Nazi stuff in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that seems like more than enough. Like you you take that, you add a possession that makes him reclaim his faith. Mm-hmm. There's your origin story. I like the churches. I think they're really cool. I think they're very cool set pieces. Uh, I thought the church in Dominion was like prettier, and I liked the design of it. But the church in Exorcist the Beginning was spookier, not not really scary. But this this is going to sound really stupid because we're talking about a, a, a series that has people getting possessed by literal demons. Mm-hmm. But to me, they always come off as like too fantastic when everything else around like the first Exorcist movie is so grounded. And I prefer like that you have this grounded setting and then something's intruding on something just more down to earth. <clears throat> uh, I don't know. I just like them. I, but my favorite genre is fantasy. Yeah. So. Um, and it gives me, it gives me a, a positive to focus on. Um, and there are, I mean, I'm not going to say that there are, are churches in Africa where people have to scale mountains to get to them. But there are definitely like churches carved out of rock in mm-hmm. Africa. That's a, a real thing. Um, and I just like the idea of like they built this church over top of this unholy battlefield and then buried it in an attempt to sanctify the battlefield. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Um. Okay. All right. I guess let's go to characters. Uh, and let's start with Stellan Skarsgård. Is he related to the other Skarsgårds? Yeah. Uh, don't ask me how. Okay. I just was curious. Uh, those being Pennywise and Randall Flagg. Yeah, they're in a, the Skarsgårds are in a lot of horror. Yeah, they are. Uh, Stellan Skarsgård, you probably know from uh, the Thor movies and the Avenger movies. Yeah, he's the one scientist, right? Yeah, Selvig. Dr. Yeah. Selvig. Uh, also, uh... In Thor the Dark World, he runs around naked. Yep. Okay. He He's in a ton of movies. The Amistad. Uh, I like Amistad. He's in Pirates of the Caribbean. He's in uh, Andor. So he's got a Star Wars connection, too. Uh, he's, in, he's in a bunch of big stuff. He, he, he has a lot of crap. What did you think of him as Father Marin? Uh, I liked him more in the beginning. I also liked him more in the beginning. I felt like he was just kind of softer and more muted like just like a little tamer in dominion and i feel like when they made the second movie he's just like go big go bigger go harder go faster yeah that i uh i wrote down in my notes something like i feel like in dominion he was asked to play marin as he was in in the original movie yeah Yeah. and uh when they reshot it they're like no we need you more tragedy we need more drama yeah um some of that I like. Some of that I thought was a little much. Um, some of it I thought was really funny. Uh, like at the beginning of the beginning, mm-hmm. the guy comes and hands him a bunch of money. He's like, oh, so now you think I'm a thief and a whore. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. I thought it was funny too. <laughs> yeah. 
I just, but I couldn't picture the Father Marin I know from The Exorcist saying that, but I'm like, who am I going to be in 50 years? Yeah, I mean, there. this you know. takes place in the mid-40s, and <laughs> The Exorcist takes place in the mid-70s, so it's a, a 30-year difference. Like, yeah, like, who knows, maybe here in 30 years I'll be this, like, soft-spoken, nice old man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so People, people, you know, you could say people don't really change, but... 30, three decades is a long time. You're not going to be the exact same person you were. Yeah. So, but that's like the note I wrote down was I feel like in Dominion he was asked to play Father Marin as he is in that movie because mm-hmm. there's a lot of the same kind of like speech patterns mm-hmm. and it, not mannerisms, but you could tell he was trying to be that dude. Or at least it seemed to me he was trying to be that dude. No, that may, I didn't have that observation, but it makes sense to me. And just a small thing, and this is stupid, and it's probably just me, but in Dominion, he wears that, like, stupid safari hard hat, <laughs> and they just, like, I think he showed up for it, for filming on Exorcist the beginning, and the director's just like, take that stupid hat off. <laughs> but you would wear this during an excavation, it protects you. <laughs> yeah, I was like, it keeps the sun off of you. He's like, I don't care, it looks stupid. We, the Who are you, Nigel Thornberry? The audience wants to see your face, not you being safe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's the reason we show so many, so, uh, so much of Robert Downey Jr., even though Iron Man's face is covered. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's why that, aside from Mando and the the people of his religions, all the other Mandalorian characters and the Mandalorian are constantly taking off their helmets. They're like, this piece of lore is neat, but it's stupid for filming. <laughs> yeah, we, we need to... Bo-Katan has to constantly take off her helmet because yeah. we want to see her face, her pretty face. Um, but overall, yeah, I, I thought he did a really good job. He, mm. I think he's a very good actor. I think um, he's my favorite of the Scars Guards. I wouldn't... Usually I make that joke like some so-and-so broke their back carrying this movie. I don't think that the movies were so bad that only one person was trying because I think a bunch of the people in these movies were at least trying with the material they had yeah but I do think he did the best job no I I agree but and if you look at the cast like he's like the the actor yeah Yeah, I'm sure a lot of of these people have careers Hmm. and have been in other stuff but he's the only one who's made it to Star Wars Marvel (laughs) just levels of money (laughs) That's how you know your success today, is if you're in Star Wars or Marvel. It's either you're in that, or you refuse to be in it, like yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio. Kick it out of bed. Like, those are the two sorts of actors that exist. Mm-hmm. You're, you're either so good that you get hired by them, or you're so good you don't beat them. Yeah. <laughs> so. I like it. Um, okay. Uh, who's next? So, the two female leads. Uh, so, it in Exorcist the Beginning... Isabella Scor, and I'm sorry, but I can't. Scorupco. I'm sorry. She plays I, Sarah. I know, I know that's not what's written, but I kept reading it as Scorpio. <laughs> yeah. She plays Sarah, and then Dominion, Clara Beller plays Rachel. Uh, yeah, good, you you first. I like Sarah more. I like Sarah more too. Yeah. I'm gonna have to reshoot my whole fucking. Uh, mini reviews of The Exorcist, so I can flip Dominion in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Because I got I, in my head, I got backwards which one was which. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I doubt that anybody cares. Come, yeah. is going to come at you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think Sarah delivered lines better. I preferred the story of she's secretly the one that's possessed. It's not like, it's not like a sixth sense level twist. Yeah, but it's for me, it's enough. Yeah, I pref- I prefer it than oh, it's it's the kid you thought it was the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, we'll, we'll get more into that for homework, and and specifically like, I didn't love her possessed, but I thought possessed Sarah was way better than possessed Che Che in the origin in Dominion. I agree, probably not for the reasons the director wanted me to. I thought she was funny, mm-hmm. but I don't think it was on purpose because mm-hmm. I was sitting there going, "This is so freaking goofy," and I try not to let like other reviews like color my opinions but i went and i watched a bunch because i was trying to get more information mm-hmm. and a lot of people are like she's so goofy i was like yeah she's so goofy she, is, she was goofy i don't think what's wrong what's wrong mary don't want to fuck me anymore yeah it, the scene where she's dry humping him yeah i was like oh my cuts God. her tongue in half 
Yeah, it, it's not the best Exorcist scene. Like, it's funny to see the the Exorcism and Exorcist Three get rivaled for being bad. <laughs> but I think it'd be funny to like watch the Exorcism Three scenes from these two movies and from Exorcist Three and try to like critically say like which one is the best and which one is the worst. That might be God. That should have been what we did. Is we're going to tier list the Exorcist scenes from the Exorcist movies. Well, the Exorcist is number one. S. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. But Rachel, is it Claire Beller, Rachel and Dominion. She's not bad. She just doesn't play nearly as much of a role. Yeah, and she's not. <sighs> Her character isn't possessed. There's no twist where it becomes her. Like, her... And she's less of a love interest for Father Marin. Like, there's still a little bit of that there. Yeah. But they don't, like, almost fuck like they do in Exorcist the beginning. So, it, basically, her whole role is to be, like, the doctor and take care of che, che mm -hmm. and all the other characters. It's much more muted. Yeah. Um... They both have this same line, and I think uh, Isabella delivers it more, which is the uh, best view of God is from hell. Mm -hmm. And in context, I, when Sarah's talking about her backstory of being in a concentration camp, I'm like, yeah, that line makes so much more sense coming from this character mm -hmm. as opposed to uh, Rachel, who kind of just says it after she, like, puts... Uh, granted, he is, like, a beat-up, cripple, disabled person. Yeah. Kid, I don't know how young he was actually supposed to be. I think be. he's supposed like to be teenager. like a teenager, yeah, like sixteen. -ish. Which, yeah, that's fucked up. But when you compare it to somebody who physically went through something themselves, mm -hmm. uh, she was uh, not castrated. She she cannot have children. They they experimented uh, on her. I, what is the word I'm looking yeah, for? I know. Sterilized. Yeah. And the li that line coming from that person makes more sense to me than the doctor who sees somebody get beat up. It, I mean, I can see both of them saying it, but mm -hmm. it's more impactful coming from Sarah. The one thing I kind of liked about Rachel mm -hmm. more is that you, because she's not the possessed one, you get to have the a scene where the kid who is possessed gets to say something terrible about her, and he says that she traded her body for food in the camps. She never tried to heal any of the other prisoners. Mm-hmm. Which was which was a nice little bit that they threw in. That is a nice little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so I lied. There is one other person between these two movies who has made it to Marvel money. So Father Francis was played by James D'Arcy in the beginning and Gabriel Mann in Dominion. I'm going to be 100% honest. I didn't know these were different people. They were. Uh, <laughs> I thought they were the same guy. James D'Arcy played... Jarvis, not the computer, as a, the butler in Agent Carter, the TV series, and then got to cameo as Jarvis in one of the flashback scenes in, Avenger, in Avengers Endgame. Oh, you made it. <laughs> I mean, he's that's more than I'm ever going to do. Yeah, that's the standard we set. <laughs> yeah. Um, I liked... I, I didn't think either were bad or either were like... They were both sort of fine. Um, I think they actually played them a little differently. Yeah. I, I think in the beginning, he's played more to be like a Catholic church simp, and it, they he, played up more of the, he's lying and he's here for the cover-up part. He's a Jesuit conspiracy dude. He, he's a Dan Brown character. Yeah, yes. <laughs> and, in, uh, and in Dominion, he's a little bit more genuine. This is the spot where Satan fell. Yeah. He, Ver versus, I can't even think of a, like a line of... Mm -hmm. he, he runs away and gets shot by arrows. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, I like both enough. Yeah. I don't think either did a, a bad job. I Maybe I'm just a little burnt out because I've seen so many of these sorts of movies. I've just made a Dan Brown joke of, like, the Jesuit conspiracist. That was another one. Uh, Stellan Skarsgård, he plays the Swiss Guard captain in Angels and Demons. I still need to watch those. Um... Angels and Demons is probably the best one of all the... Dan Brown movies? Yeah, but... Still... I, still, I still need to get caught up on reading those books, and they're such easy reads. Inferno is so good. Okay, we might do anyway, Inferno. Um, we could probably justify that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's about Dante's Inferno. Like, yeah. yeah. And then we'll do what's Dante's scare, Inferno. What's scarier than that? 
Dante's Iceland. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, and then uh, just a couple other characters. So there were other characters who weren't recast between the two. Uh, so Jomo, who's like the guide, mm. he's, the, he's the interpreter. Major Granville, who's the, the British major. And then the sergeant major. They were played by Israel Oyelamade, Julian Wadham, and Ralph Brown. And they play, all three of those actors played both roles in both films. General thoughts? Uh, Jomo was perfectly fine. It, he was like a less funny version of that character from Roar. Yeah. <laughs> they should have just gotten the dude from Roar. Yes. <laughs> that guy probably retired after Roar. He's like, I'm not doing any more movies. <laughs> I like. We should reach out to him and see if he'll do an interview. Keep talking. I'll see if he's alive. <laughs> um, I, I think that all three of these dudes is an example of what a different script and a different director can do for an actor. Mm -hmm. Because they they were all the same dude, but they all felt very... Not different, but different enough. Um, Jomo, for example, in the beginning, everything's much more somber, and there's like this air of like dread around him because he's seeing all the shit he that... He died two years ago. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, but because he's like he's he, he's feeling the same vibe that everyone else is feeling. Everything's cursed. He's not saying it, but you can tell he's like feeling that. Yeah. Where in the uh, Dominion, he's more like, oh no, I'll go interpret for the tribe. Everything's cool. He's like trying to be more calm and collected about it, even though that there is like some tension rising. Yeah. And the tension sort of rises through the course of the movie, where it, when Marin shows up in the beginning, the tension's already set. Like everyone's like, Ugh. yeah. Uh, same thing with uh, the military dudes, uh, Major uh, Granville. Like he shows up in the beginning, and he's all like, "We are gonna kill them all." Where in uh, Dominion, it's like, "Okay, no, we're gonna be cool with the tribes until they do one thing to piss him off, and he shoots one of them in the head." Yeah, which was his two two of his soldiers try to uh, loot the loot the church, and then we're like massacred. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, I know. I agree with everything you said. I, I felt like his suicide scene in the beginning was a lot more over the top, but I thought it kind of worked for the movie that they were trying to do. I, th I think what I'm coming down to is is that if you're going to try to do a slow burn, but you can't, mm -hmm. then just be over the top. Because I'm just like, I, I think I'm just preferring the beginnings over the topness overall. Yeah, no, I agree. And th like that like scene where... He's, like, seeing all the butterflies moving, and then, like, one comes out of his mouth, and he immediately shoots himself. Like, I could see, like, that happening in a horror movie, like... Like, a person isn't sure what's real, what's going on. He thinks... Like, I'm, 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 nope, I'm noping out. I'm noping out of the situation, versus he kills himself because he rose more tensions with the tribe, and he's like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. You know, it's like I probably shouldn't have shot that girl. And that's probably one of those things that I would say about Dominion, is it's... It is trying to do something different, which I appreciate. Yeah. But I think at the end of the day, if you can't actually do something different, then just do something fun. Yeah. No, I agree. Uh, and then the last people I have are, are two possessed. In the beginning, it's Joseph, played by Remy Sweeney. Joseph is also in Dominion, but is he, not the possessed. He just doesn't really matter at the end of the day in yeah. Dominion. But in Dominion, the possessed is Chiche, played by Billy Crawford. I wrote his name down as Chi Chi. <laughs> no, he's not jugs <laughs> or breasts or or whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was like, I have no idea how to spell that, and I couldn't be bothered to look it up. So, Chi Chi was weird for me. It was one of those things where I'm like, they're trying something a little different. Mm-hmm. That at first I was sort of appreciating, but then it just wasn't sticking the landing anywhere. So I, I like understand like he's he's not a leper, but he's essentially like the leper character. You, you I, I don't want to like paint with broad strokes, especially over a made up African tribe. Mm -hmm. Or for all I know, this is based off of real African. I, yeah, I don't know. I probably should have looked that up. But even in like our own cultures, there's a long history of treating the disabled very poorly. Mm -hmm. 
So the idea of like a dude having to live on the outskirts because he was born different and being abused, yep. and then that's what opens his soul up to a demon. Mm -hmm. I can see that being a very interesting story. I just don't think they did enough with it. Yeah, um, and it obviously like it works with like some of your ma it, two of your main characters being a priest and a former priest, and another one being a doctor yeah so of course those three characters are gonna like open themselves to him yeah and they have the sympathy for him and they're trying to help him out and then i liked like his body was healing and i was like that's sort of cool like the demons healing his body mm -hmm. and that's probably opening him up more but they don't really explain that which i like and don't like at the same time it, it's one of those like i don't want you to explain it too much but yeah and of course to them they're interpreting it as a miracle from god yeah um and just a real quick, the part of Che Che's story gave me, like, kind of a flashback to the fourth closet, <laughs> where they get the surgeon from Nairobi to come and break his leg and reset it. Yeah. And then Father Marin's taking him back to the plane. He's like, "Why don't you stay for a few days?" <laughs> and he just, he's just like, "No," he's like Lamar, and just like, "Nope, <laughs> I'm, I'm leaving, and I don't know why you're staying." I. I, I had a proposal, but I didn't know when to shoehorn it in, so I guess I'll shoehorn it in now, is when we do our awards from now on, we'll have the Lamar Award for the smartest for, for the smartest character. He gets it from this movie, <laughs> yeah. like, for sure. Like, he's like, mm-mm. <laughs> I, I helped that kid. I see what's going on here. I'm out. Have you ever, uh, th this is a weird tangent, have you seen Tenacious D in The Pick of Destiny? I saw, like, Maybe like five or ten minutes of it. There's a scene where Jack Black and uh, Kyle are being like confronted by a uh, robber who has like a broken leg, mm -hmm. and he pulls out a knife, but he's like twenty feet over there. And he's like, "Now give me your wallet." And Jack Black's like, "No, come over here and do it." It's, I'm not coming over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. Of. Like, why yeah. would why would you? Why would you <laughs> exactly? <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> and then why would I go back to Hurricane? <laughs> The other side of the coin is Joseph, and I think he's just, he's hes very adequate, very functional, but and it doesn't even really matter because he's a, he's a red herring. He was almost a good red herring. Uh -huh. I think my problem with him being a red herring is there's not enough clues that he's yeah. not really the possessed one because he's doing possessed shit. I wouldn't say... It comes out of nowhere, but it's they definitely didn't give you enough to figure it out on your own. It, it's something to where, like, if you rewatch the movie, you could, like, see what's going on. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, for the beginning, that's its biggest failing, is that you have this, like, just like Che Che, you got this cool idea, mm -hmm. but you didn't execute it right. Not for me. Yeah. So. But it doesn't, it doesn't like, kill the movie mm -hmm. for me. It's not like... I didn't go, even when I first saw it, I didn't go, that's stupid. Yeah. And I was a 16-year-old edgelord. Everything was stupid. Yeah. Um, and I I, I'm, I doubt I saw that coming when I was a kid and mm -hmm. saw it. I would have been like 14, 15. Uh, I saw it coming this time, but that's only because you told me, mm -hmm. I think, during our Believer episode. Yeah, I was rambling about it. Yeah. And then, and I, I saw it. I was like, oh, this is what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. Kill you all! <laughs> I'll drive you crazy and I'll kill you all! I'm every nightmare you ever had! I am your worst dream come true! I'm everything you ever were afraid of! Scary shit is either movie scary. I don't think so. I think the beginning has some things that could be genuinely terrifying. Uh, the kid getting ripped apart by hyenas is pretty, pretty bad. Uh, the CGI on the hyenas kind of takes me out. The first jump scare got, got me this time, and I knew it was coming. I think that the hyena scene would have been legitimately scary if the hyenas looked better. Yeah, if it didn't look like a CD-ROM game, I'd be like, you know what? Yeah. I think the hyenas in Beginning are better than the hyenas in Dominion, but they're still really bad. And, and, and the best part was it was... It wasn't like a hyena just came out and killed a kid and like there was a scream. They showed you the hyenas killing the kid and that's how hyenas kill things. Yeah. They take you down and they start eating you alive. So. It's a horrible I, way to if die. If that scene would have been filmed in 2023, I feel like it would have been terrifying. Yeah. Um, and then, mo but mostly, I feel like Dominion wasn't scary at all. Mm -hmm. And the beginning was gross or, yeah. or tense. Like the they 
the CGI was obviously very bad, but it was 2004, mm-hmm. and the you know the full Lord of the Rings trilogy hadn't even been released. Like, w- movies with low budget and didn't really have a chance to have good CGI. This is, you know, this is Alien 3 and Alien Resurrection era mm-hmm. of special effects. But when they and, did use practical effects, it was pretty good. Yeah, and also, this was off of all of reshoots with an emergency budget. Yeah. So... The scene where they're looking for the old dude with the messed up face Mm -hmm. and they find like at the bar like all the blood on the bar with his teeth like Mm -hmm. mixed in and there's flies buzzing in and out of it that was legitimately gross that was really gross um he was he was added for i don't remember his character yeah he's he's not not in there at all okay um i remember when i first saw Marin in the hat i thought that was him (laughs) <laughs> That's why they had him take the hat off. <laughs> the the baby was not fun to watch. It wasn't fun to watch. I think it was just legitimately gross. Yeah. Um. I'm not even a person who's against like, like shock horror. Mm-hmm. I, it's not for me. But it's like, if you want to do it. But I'm like, uh, you know what? It's like, who's enjoying that? Like, who is seeing that and going, oh, that's even me who loves like the Saw movies. And is walking out going, oh, that was so fucked up. Oh. I was just sitting there like, uh. That's gross and nobody wants to look at that. <laughs> yeah, no thank you. <laughs> yeah. It was like, it was like the, uh, in AVPR, the, uh, the yeah. pregnant lady is like, you and went there, good job. I guess my line really is just shit happening to pregnant women. Yeah. I, I guess that's just the old conservative in me as I'm like, no, they're off limits. <laughs> and that's just the, the dad in me. Yeah. Like, I don't, uh. I, I, Unless I, you're literally pet cemetery who you're telling one of the greatest horror stories of all time like and and i feel like that's different because that's built up around yeah the theme of grief as and opposed that, to that's going, the whole story as opposed let's add this in going i want to do something fucked up man yeah and they could have they could have still had like the still bur- the still birth with and not in so much detail mm-hmm. um okay effects we talked about the effects um so overall, not scary, but there were there was potential to be scary at, in Exorcist the beginning. I do think when I saw it as a kid, it creeped me out. Not not anything like The Exorcist, but I was more, I was less jaded and more susceptible back then. I got something for Kiss Me Fat Boy. All right. Uh, would you fuck Possess Sarah? What's the matter, man? I'd be more likely to fuck Possess Sarah than Possess Che Che. <laughs> or... I am perfection. Or or Possessed Regan in Exorcist 2, where she like... I'm glad you said Exorcist 2. Yeah. Well, obviously I wouldn't in Exorcist 1. But in Exorcist 2, she make she tries to make out with the... Like the, the priest. Yeah. Pazuzu Reagan is the only Reagan. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I probably wouldn't, but... I mean, her, her cleavage still looked okay when she was possessed. Just, just that entire, like, dry humping scene. I was cackling. And I, yeah. that's not the reaction the movie wanted. No. <laughs> the power of Christ compels you! The, the power, power of Christ compels you! I think there's... Again, there's a bunch of interesting ideas that I think would work individually, but I just honestly felt was, like, too much in a single movie. Mm-hmm. Part of that's, like, uh, this is the spot where Satan fell. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that that's fine. Because that's an interesting, like, theological question. Because, you know, some theologians believe, like, every, that hell is, like, an actual physical place. Yeah. And that this, like, when Satan fell, he did fall to Earth. And other people are like, well, it's metaphorical. And other people are like, no, it's more like these are other realms of existence. Mm -hmm. And sort of playing with that, I feel like, would be an interesting plot for an Exorcist movie by itself. Yeah. I think Exorcist Believer sort of flirted with that idea. Yeah, it, it sort of flirted with that idea. I would be more interested in Deceiver if maybe that was the direction they were going. Yeah. Possibly. And, like, seeing, like, what they did with that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So, so you got like some interesting like theologian questions. I, I've always been fascinated by Jesuits. Yeah, uh, they're like my favorite part of like Japan opening itself up to the rest of the world is like priests going down there and trying to fuck with Japan and then eventually getting just wrecked for it. Yeah, no, the history of the Jesuit order is super interesting. Uh, it's that's one of the reasons I love Dan Brown. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I know that there's a timeline out there where I ended up as a Jesuit. <laughs> I just I'm going to be the ultra Catholic. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would never, I would probably never ever rejoin another Christian church, but if I did, it would be some form of Catholicism just because it's, it's the most fun. Yeah. It, to me, it feels like the most mythological. Yeah. Like there's, there's some like legitimate, I don't know, grandioseness to it all. And it's like when we saw the statue of Baal versus the statue of Pazuzu. Pazuzu makes more sense. I think Ball's interesting, but they don't do anything with it. I, I feel like Dominion really leans into the Christian mythology, mm. and the beginning leans more into the, the pagan mythology that's relevant to Pazuzu. Mm-hmm. And I like both, but if it's an exorcist movie, it should be more in the second direction. And, I've, I, and I honestly... I guess what I would say for The Power of Christ Compels You is that I wish they would have explored those things more. I... The idea of rediscovering faith is a big thing, but that's kind of big in a lot of Exorcist movies. So when you get back around to watching these, it doesn't feel, I guess, special anymore. Oh my god, are you Stephen King? No, I'm Dean Koontz. Oh. Kings and Koontz, you said your king was the... um... Uh, and for the beginning, how they unfurled his uh, backstory. Yeah. Even, like, when he was, like, down there fighting Pazuzu at the end and you were still getting, like, glimpses of it mm-hmm. and how the demons were trying to torment him with it versus what he was internally feeling. It felt much more psychological to me. I, I felt more for Marin in those scenes because the scenes were shot to be emotional as opposed to shot to be tell you the backstory. Which tell, is like a credit to filmmaking and what editing and music and directing can do for mm. the same idea. I do think that as a whole, the editing on the be- on beginning was, was put together better. Mm-hmm. I'm not really. Sh- I think my king or uh, my king is going to be for both, and it's just that these two movies tied into a lot of topics and themes that I am personally more interested in than previous Exorcist movies did, that being like African culture and tribal culture, World War II, uh, the Holocaust, um, recapturing your your faith, uh, archaeology, excavation, like all that. You know, I really liked like the little bit that took in of Exorcist two that took place in Africa, but this is just like all the best parts of Exorcist 2 for me minus James Earl Jones um, f- they should have had uh, James Earl Jones be his interpreter he would, by this point he had all the Star Wars money they should, they should bring him back for Deceiver <laughs> if they do I will <laughs> I will watch Deceiver I will see, if they bring James Earl Jones we will Jones do an episode <laughs> it will happen um, and then Koontz I think my Koontz is the same for both it's just I wish they would have tied in his own story of how he lost and regained his faith from the from the novel into this, but Mike Koontz is also the same, but it's different for both movies. But it's the same problem, mm-hmm. as I think it, the ending and the actual like exorcism itself just reaches this realm of absolutely goofy. Yeah, and the, I was watching there going, man, the beginning is really this exorcism is really goofy. I bet the Dominion will be fine. And then I'm watching the Dominion, and I'm I think like, it's worse. I was like, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The beginning. I think that you can argue till you're blue in the face about what the the best Exorcist movie is, but I think the original is the only one to have an effective exorcism. Yeah, a hundred percent. And but for me, like how goofy both of the endings were. Yeah. Mine is like the shot with all the dead people, but I'm talking like the the, the actual ex- yeah. ex- exorcism. No, I agree. The, they were both way too goofy and over the top, and. The, the makeup in the beginning looked ridiculous and 
just Cheche uh, overall looked ridiculous. Yeah, I, I didn't like either, but Cheche was worse. So, uh, the, my Koontz is the same. Yeah. Okay, cool. Ranking, I'm going to let you go first. I will tell you that I actually have these movies kind of high. Um, ne- neither's in my top ten. But I will tell you, they're, they're maybe higher than you would expect. And that's more because... I've disliked so much of what we've watched, <laughs> but also because these movies tie into things that I specifically am really interested in, archaeology, World War II, the Holocaust, all that stuff. Find uh, The Exorcist 2 for me, and I'm going to go from there. You're number 60. Okay, it's way higher than that. Okay, I'm going to put it above... I'm going to put it, them above Godzilla vs. Bambi. I'm going to put them above The Stand... The Miss 2017 is the TV show. Yeah. I'm going to put them above the TV show. Okay, I think I'm going to put Dominion is going to go below these uh, mermaid forests. Because at the end of the day, I can at least say that that's anime. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the beginning's getting a little higher, though. Yeah. Um, we're going to have to keep going up. Okay, it's not going above Ring Coslin Bond, so now I have to figure out where it's going on here. I think I'm going to put it right below... Mm. It's hard. Yeah, uh, right below a Return to Salem's Lot. Yeah, I'm going to put it right below. It was going to be above or below, but the thing that broke the tie in my brain was I wanted the Salem's Lots together. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for me, I have Dominion at number 24 below the original blob and above not Five Nights at Freddy's. Now, before you all come at me, <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's is production-wise and, and, pro- and probably like every way that you can unbiasedly evaluate a film, FNAF, the FNAF movie is, is better than this. It's just that this speaks to some specific things that I'm very interested in. Yeah, I, I don't think there's a problem with that. Uh, I honestly don't think there's a problem with that ranking. And then I have Exorcist the Beginning at number 19, which is below Prometheus and above The Mist film. And yes, The Mist is is most assuredly a better movie, but again... Just stuff that personally speaks to you. Yeah. And it doesn't make me sick to my stomach. <laughs> yeah, at the end. <laughs> Even with the fetus... That that did, yeah. I mean, that's yeah, but they didn't end on that, Daniel. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yes. yes, that's a hundred percent true. No, I actually, I um, because when I was sitting there watching it, I was among my notes were, I bet you Ryan is really gonna like these movies, and I can tell why. Yeah, I mean, it just it just like the same way that you love Exorcist three because it's about serial killers and and um, and like police drama and police drama, like, and that's just. I don't hate that stuff, but it's just not something that I'm particularly interested in. Yeah, like, we went to school for different things for a reason. Yeah, but, I, you know, I love history and archaeology and studying World War II and the Holocaust. So, like, a movie that, like, pulls from all that is obviously going to be more interesting to me. And and the thing is, it didn't do any of those things particularly poorly, mm-hmm. which is something I think would have made it, like, lower for you, like, if it was, like either really insensitive or did, like, a really bad job with archaeology. Yeah. But it did stuff like, man, this should be way more weathered than it is. Yeah. Which is kind of, you know, raising interesting questions about archaeology and possession and shit like that. That's, you know, that's neat. Yeah, I thought these these both of these movies were bordering on being legitimate pieces of historical fiction. Mm-hmm. But obviously not because they, they go in a supernatural route. But yeah. But there, there is a version of these stories that could have been kind of a controversial movie. But I love Zulu, and both of these movies have huge Zulu I w- vibes. I was screaming Zulu during the attack scene. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Zulu is a great movie. It is. It is. Um, great Michael Caine movie. Okay. Uh, homework. How would you rework Father Marin's origins? to make it more like his story in the novel. Alrighty, so my entire idea for an Exorcist prequel specifically on Father Marin, if you knock aside my like belief of not doing it, mm-hmm. 
is to basically just do the Exorcist beginning again, but to scale everything back by like 15 or 20 percent. And then you add in those emotional scenes of the stuff like he's talking about in the novel, and you replace some of the gore. Uh, you, like Dead Fetus Baby, just take that out and put in some more father. It would be the beginning, but with character building moments for Marin. Okay, I like it. I'm for me, mine is similar, but I'm going to do what William Peter Blatty could never do and make an exorcist movie without an exorcism. <laughs> so take, take Dominion. Mm-hmm. And remove pos- the the demon, mm-hmm. and kind of tie it back to what Father Marin said it, in the novel. He said that he lost his faith because he was concerned that he didn't care enough about people, but then he realized that his actions were more important to his words. So, same basic premise. He comes to this uh, village in Kenya to help unearth this church, and he finds this kid Cheche, who is obviously an outcast and needs his help. And, but in his head, he's like, oh, fuck that kid. Who cares? But through his relationship with the doctor, Rachel, who he wants to bone, <laughs> he realizes that at, as, like, a functional member of society, he should probably give a shit about Che Che. And he he helps Che Che, gets to bone Rachel, and through that, he, he gets rid of his blue balls and realizes he needs to go back to the church. That's not bad. I like that. Yeah. I like how we each took one of the, the prequel movies and retooled it. Yeah. Okay, question for the listeners. The Versus series this week uh, is the characters of Stephen King versus the characters of Seth MacFarlane. <laughs> and actually, I made that short. Daniel hasn't seen it yet because we're recording this before release. So I'm going to show it to you real quick. We did a short... Uh, on YouTube and it, it's on TikTok and Facebook and Instagram. Go check that out. Um, and, and what I'm interested in is uh, leave a comment with other Seth MacFarlane and S- Stephen King characters that share a name that I could have included but didn't. I think I had like nine. Mm. It took me a long time to come up with those. Lots of googling. <laughs> so pretty good. Yeah, and I left I left out a couple that I thought of. Um, and, and I left out a couple that were just, like, too deep. <laughs> like, nobody's going to realize this one. <laughs> um, and then... I'm going to have to go... I'm going to have to watch that video in bits and go... As King, McFarlane, King, King... Yeah. <laughs> uh, for further reading, I put Zulu. Zulu, like, watch Zulu. Yeah, if you like these movies, watch Zulu. I... This, they're the better version of these movies. Yeah. Um, and then, before we go to upcoming... So... This is where we're wrapping up Exorcist coverage. There, But there are two pieces of Exorcist media that we have not covered. One is the television series that we discovered was a thing while recording. Yeah, It's ten episodes long. Oof. Maybe like down the road. I don't think right now. Yeah, it, But maybe it's something we could do down the road. If we need a break from books, if we start to get behind on novels, it's a good thing to hit. Something I'm more interested in, in this sounds kind of bad, but it also, to me, sounds kind of good. There is a novelization of Exorcist the Beginning, and it's actually, it's pretty highly rated on Goodreads and has a, uh, has an audiobook version with that's narrated by a full cast on Audible. Okay. And I was thinking about it, and I was like, a lot of my issues with Exorcist the Beginning are like, bad effects and stuff like that and like maybe it would be better as a novel i guess i will i'll do it i think i think the exorcism would come off a lot less goofy (laughs) in a novel than it would probably yeah and it's also like super short oh i like super short i think like the audiobook's like three hours uh if we ever want to hop back on uh exorcist stuff i do have a suggestion Mm mm-hmm uh i can never remember his name uh friedkin the director of the first exorcist william friedkin uh, he did a documentary about an actual exorcist. Oh, that's cool. It's so bad, but oh. <laughs> I, I think that there's material in there. So I'll <laughs> say right now we're thinking about not covering Exorcist Deceiver when it comes out. When it comes out, if we decide to do an episode on it, maybe we'll we'll cover these other things. Yeah. As, in in lead up to it, I, I'm just not excited for it. But like, I, you know. I've been proven wrong before, so... Yeah, and 
just because the first one was bad doesn't necessarily mean the second one was bad. But at this point in time, I'm completely okay just not covering it. And I, am, I am also okay just skipping it and focusing on some stuff we'll actually enjoy. A year from now, we may feel differently. Yeah. But we'll see. So upcoming on the Horror Babylon, speak, so we kind of were accidentally being topical, and I, I didn't even realize it. So our next novel episode on November 19th is Battle Royale by Koshun Takami. Mm-hmm. Do you know what movie comes out the ex- that exact same week? It's the new Hunger Games movie. The new Hunger Games movie. <laughs> yeah. who d- didn't do that on purpose. Oh. <laughs> didn't I did not do that on purpose. I thought that was on purpose. No, it wasn't. <laughs> and then the next Sunday, November 26th, which is the Sunday after Thanksgiving here in America, we are reviewing the first Battle Royale movie. And after that, we will also do the manga and the uh, second movie. And then our next two bonus episodes on Thursday, November 16th, the Dead eye thon continues with the Army of Darkness. Mm-hmm. And then the Thursday of Thanksgiving, we are doing the Simpsons Thanksgiving of Horror segment, The Last Thanksgiving, which is a parody of Alien. And uh, just real quick, uh, I, did, I did start reading Battle Royale this week. Um... I don't hate it. There are there are things I really really like about it, and then there are some other things that I'm not crazy about. But I'm focusing hard on the things I like. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm focusing really hard on them. I I love this. <laughs> well, I think what what I'm not liking is is children being forced to murder each other. And then I'm thinking about you and things like Higurashi and Doki Doki. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I can see why Daniel likes this so much. I'm reading it and I'm like, I'm just pretending like this is like a modern day 1984. And I'm like, yes. It kind of is. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, it's not just like George Orwell's 1984, but th- there's a lot of similarities. No, it's a fascist dystopia. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay. Um, it's also there's a lot of similarities to Stephen King's novel, The Long Walk, mm-hmm. which I'll talk about more in our actual episode. And also, Koshun Takami like opens the book with a Bruce, Sting- Bruce Springsteen quote, which Stephen King opens so many of his books with Bruce Springsteen quotes. Uh, not even funny. I open my books with corn quotes. <laughs> it tells you the quality difference. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Nobody makes it past the quotes on Daniel's books. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right, upcoming, uh, we already did that. Thank you to our patrons, Abigail the First, Breaker of Chains, Mother of Dragons, and... Logan. The, the Full, Full Metal, Metal Patron. Patron. And Ben, the Fourth, Patron of Hope. And Mia the Fifth, the Rainmaker. She makes it rain. Oh, and thank you to Forceman Comics and Gaming, which you can visit at the Morgantown Mall in Morgantown, West Virginia, the Mall Robinson in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You can shop online at shop.forcemancomics.com and say hello to Grandpa's the, Ronald the Third, Grandpa's of Christmas. And definitely, if you shop online or in person, mention the Horror Babylon. Let them know that we sent you. And thank you for rewatching Exorcist: The Beginning and Dominion prequel to The Exorcist, worst title ever, and recording with me tonight. I should be thanking you. Uh, like These aren't great movies, but yeah. I, get, I prefer covering them to uh, Five Nights at Freddy's novels. It's no spring trap. It is absolutely no spring trap. Uh, yeah. Uh, but anyways, uh, thank you to our patrons. Stay tuned for our socials and stay scary. Stay scary, everybody. And now for the obligatory socials. Please like, share, and subscribe. You can find the podcast on Twitter at HorrorPod69. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Slasher, and Goodreads. Become part of the Disturbed community by asking for the Facebook group and Discord links. Send dick pics to the Horror of Babylon podcast at gmail.com. Support the show at patreon.com slash the Horror of Babylon. In closing, you can let your friends know that The Horror of Babylon is available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible and all other major podcast apps. Stay scary.
Hello. Welcome to the ASRM. It stands for Asses, Sex, Mothers, and Romance. I'm Ryan. I'm your host. We're going to talk about asses. Who has a great ass? Write into my email at Ryan Loves Asses and tell me why. Tell me who. Rate our ass on a scale of one to Selma Hayek. Alrighty, I'm back.